Uh, my job today was supposed to kind of warm you up and manage your expectations and give you a little taste of what you're going to hear from all of the various presentations. But the foundation that Shane has built is uh, pretty impressive. So uh, I'm going to jump right in and, uh, and cover briefly in a few minutes um, what we're going to be talking about today, uh, but really get quickly to the eight presentations that are really the primary reason why we're here today. So as, as Shane so eloquently stated, uh, you know, our goal today when we, um, we ask a question about what we want to accomplish uh, at the end of our program today is um, ensuring that installation of safe and compliant products has been achieved. Um, and uh, with that, we're going to build a, um, a library of uh, knowledge from uh, eight different uh, case studies or countries that we're going to take <laughs> a look at, what goes on there. And we're going to focus in on some of the key aspects of uh, of the, the schemes in those countries and from that we can understand how they collectively work in harmony to address the issues that Shane uh, uh, categorized. So here are the, um, the presenters that we're going to be uh, touching on today and uh, what I'm going to do is um, the bio is already published in the uh, meeting documentation so I'm just going to introduce each speaker and allow you to read up on everybody um, and maybe the, each speaker can touch on a little bit of what they do before they launch into their program. So back to the overview again, Shane pointed out that products play a critical role in public health and safety. You know, we're practitioners of uh, water and sanitation. So if you think about it, products are the interconnection of the conveyance system for water and sanitation. So without it, we're not practicing what we, uh, we love to do. Um, so we're going to gain a better understanding of these key elements, you know, the scope. Um, from uh, country to country, products are addressed differently. Um, some countries address uh, all products, uh, like in the United States. Some only focus on products that address certain key aspects, whether it's health effects or water efficiency issues, uh, backflow prevention characteristics. Um, we're going to hear more about that today. Um, things like uh, the enabling mechanisms, uh, national laws, are they plumbing codes, are they uh, local requirements that put all this into gear. That's all uh, part of the tapestry of uh, the whole scheme of product approval. Um, the standards in which are created, you know, there's an increasing desire by the industry to create harmonization globally. And, um, and we're starting to see that with, uh, you know, Dr. Carol Grossman is going to talk about maybe the first efforts uh, in the plumbing sector to have a an international standard that's harmonized dealing with some uh, plumbing elements. We don't have a lot of uh, harmonization in that space. We have some regional harmonization in North America, for example, but breaking out into a larger scale, that's something that looks like it's starting to happen. Uh, product categories, like I mentioned, uh, in many countries, uh, it covers everything. Some, there's no requirements. Uh, it's voluntary. So uh, we're going to get a, a, a taste of uh, what things are like in various countries across the, the globe. Um, product standards and specifications uh, are really, I think, the, the nuts and bolts of uh, product, uh, the approval schemes, and that sets the fit for purpose, the, the requirements, uh, what needs to be done. Uh, what I'm interested in hearing more about is um, the nuances, the differences in, uh, in how standards are developed, um, whether or not they're developed through a government agency, or are they developed through a private sector process like the United States and, and other uh, governments. Um, the process, is it uh, truly a consensus process? Is it a restricted process where uh, certain stakeholders are there generating requirements and back to harmonization? You know, um, an interesting story that I like to tell, I've been involved with uh, codes and standards in the United States for 30 years. And um, people don't realize that there's uh, about 44,000 political entities in the United States that are uh, empowered to enforce some level of requirements over construction. Think about that for 44,000. And um, without some kind of sense to uh, regulation on a, a large scale, that's a nightmare to deal with. So we'll touch on a little bit of uh, the reach of harmonization in our discussions today. Conformity assessment, another important piece of the whole product approval scheme, uh, the process that we come to validate that products in, in fact do comply, whether it's a first party uh, manufacturer self-certification or declaration, or is there, in fact, a robust third-party certification process where an independent agency that is accredited by some national body has, has validated all aspects of uh, um, testing, manufacturing, and then ongoing auditing to make sure that products continue to comply with the initial certification decision? Um, another thing that's interesting to find out is, uh, you know, a requirement is only good as uh, its enforcement, and uh, that's another critical part of things and um, and where that enforcement kicks in. You know, I, I know that in the United States, there are certain um, enforcement requirements where it's a point of installation where the requirement kicks in. So it's the installer's responsibility to actually enforce um, 
the requirements. And in some cases, there is a um, point of sale. So uh, products can't enter commerce unless they are in compliance. And that's different that you're going to hear. There's a, uh, it's a disconnect there. And in the States, we have both. We have some points of sale and points of installation. I think Australia has something similar. And then there's other um, countries like Switzerland. I think it's um, it's point of sale and it's globally. Um, so anyway, um, it'll be good to get the, the different differences. And as Shane pointed out, from that body of work that we're going to uh, come away with today, uh, make better decisions moving forward. And with the wrap up, um, what I'd like to do is uh, have questions before each speaker walks away. And uh, we'll have plenty of time for the question and answer period. And then we'll move on to the next speaker. And um, one of the things that I also want to make sure that we get from all the speakers is, is their personal assessment of uh, the schemes that they're talking about. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, uh, what, what works? And, and if you, in the real ideal world, uh, could fix something, what would it be that you could fix to make things a little better? And that would also be helpful for all of us to have a better understanding of. And with that, I think we'll have a very robust uh, understanding of things around the world and uh, walk away with a better understanding that can help do some good down the road.